What is up everybody, it is Guy Smiley here, and in this video we're going to be doing a mock review of this fully functional DC-17S blaster pistol. Um, this is a blaster that I built for the- wait, what the heck, there's a little- something- somebody's coming in my room right now. I'm literally home alone, there shouldn't be anybody here. Wait, what the heck? What the heck?! <laughs> oh my gosh! Guys, I, did, I didn't think we'd be testing this blaster out so soon, but I just literally shot Darth Vader. He came- there's a Darth Vader in my house? How did he- Oh! <laughs> Alright guys, so uh, I will have to uh, deal with that after this- uh, after I'm finished with this video. Um, so Darth Vader intrusions aside. This was the blaster that I made for the Revolug blaster collaboration. I was one of 17 builders who actually made a one-to-one -one scale LEGO Star Wars blaster for this collaboration. If you guys want to see all of the builds that everybody made, just go to the Revolug Instagram page and scroll all the way down and you'll be able to see all 17 blasters that were created. But I didn't think that I was actually going to participate at first because I this is this was actually the first time that I had ever done a one-to-one -one scale Lego blaster, and I didn't really have anything in my mind that I wanted to do. Uh, but then I was actually watching Star Wars Clone Wars, that is Star Wars colon Clone Wars, not Star Wars The Clone Wars, there's a big difference there. Uh, this was the one from 2003, and it actually had Captain Fordo dual wielding uh, this blaster here. And I uh, was just, I just got some inspiration from that. And I was like, I have to build that blaster. And it actually translated itself very, very well into Lego. Uh, this is the DC-17S blaster pistol. Um, it's very, it's kind of different than the one, than the DC-15, I believe, is the one that Captain Rex used in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Uh, this one was never actually shown again, I don't believe, in Star Wars other than in that 2003 animated series. The instructions for this build are actually available for sale on the Rebelug instruction store. They cost $8.00. I spent a very long time in studio making step-by-step -step instructions for this build, so they are very easy to follow if you guys want to build it yourselves. And you can also download a parts list over there, which you can import into BrickLink and make into a wanted list if you guys want to buy all the pieces for this if you don't have them already in your collection and you want to make this a permanent fixture in your uh, LEGO Star Wars display. So there's actually two main features that I was able to work into this blaster pistol here. Uh, I was able to actually get a working m removable magazine in there. Uh, it's not as long as I would like it to be just because if we uh, take off this paneling here on the on the on the handle, we can see that there needs to be a lot of stuff going on here uh, to make it stable and to allow the actual handle to attach to the body without falling off when you swing it around. So that took up a lot of space and I wasn't able to actually make the magazine any longer. But in the 2003 animated series, we do see Captain Fordo and the ARC troopers actually loading their weapons. And he does actually put a magazine into the handle of his gun. This is really the only time, correct me if I'm wrong, that we actually see clone troopers actually loading their weapons. Commander, approaching target. So that was pretty cool, and I'm really happy that I was able to get that feature in there, uh, even if the magazine is a little bit too short. But he puts the magazine in the handle of the gun, and then he actually presses a button on the back, I believe, which makes these lights on the side light up. I was not able to actually put a light brick inside the gun. I did try to do that, but there wasn't enough room with all the stuff I had going on in there with uh, these uh, these cheese slopes and this kind of this kind of mechanism I had to make to get this stuff to fit inside there and be connected securely. There's also a working trigger on the gun with a simple rubber band mechanism. There's a rubber band attached right here on the inside of the body of the gun, and then it just kind of loops around and attaches to this uh, Technic piece right there on the trigger. On the other side of the gun, we actually did I did actually try to use transparent colors here to signify that this uh, this light here is actually not lit 
it up while these two are. So this would kind of mean that you have 66% of your ammunition left. Uh, if what I think is correct, then that these are kind of like the ammunition indicators. I didn't think the laser guns would actually run out of ammunition at some point, but uh, I guess if you do have a mag in there, uh, they would. And here's what the tip of the gun looks like. I was able to use an inverted dish along with some jumper plates and some, some of these rail pieces there to kind of offset it just a little bit and make it look very accurate to what I think it looks like in the show. And on the stand, I was able to actually make, it was kind of an afterthought. I didn't actually make a stand for it at first, but I think that the stand really actually made it look great and it ended up looking being a great display piece actually as well uh, with the stand because just having a blaster just laying around uh, doesn't really look that good, doesn't really make a great display piece, but if it's on a stand, it does look really good, I think in my opinion. And uh, I was able to complete the stand with a Republic insignia there, fully brick built, and it does look uh, pretty good, I think. I think I was able to line it up all perfectly and uh, find some pieces that kind of represented the actual insignia pretty well. I wasn't able to get, there should be another kind of area on the inside of the circle with some other uh, dashed lines. I wasn't able to do that, but I think that it looks pretty good without it, in my opinion, and it just, it just kind of completes the look of the stand. And as we saw at the beginning of the video, of course, uh, the gun is stable enough to be held in hand. It's the uh, the handle to the body connection that's usually the hardest thing to, to, uh, to make when doing a one-to-one -one scale blaster, but I was able to find a pretty good connection between the handle and the body uh, so that the handle doesn't really fall off if you move it around like this. Because uh, previously I did have a way that I was doing it with uh, the handle and the body that if you did this, the, the body would flip off and it would just not be good. But I found a pretty stable connection there with some snot bricks and some clips and plates uh, that connect the handle to the body and make it uh, very stable enough to uh, hold and uh, swing around and do whatever you want with. And I think that is going to be it for this video. Be sure to leave a comment down below with, with your guys' thoughts on this build. Uh, if you have any recommendations, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. And uh, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, frick! Oh.